Hey everyone, just want to take a quick moment and let you know of a few ways you can help support the show. First, you can like this video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the content we're putting out. Share this episode with other creatives and help spread the word. Next, you can go to creativesideup.com. That'll take you over to our Ko-fi page where you have the ability to drop us a few bucks and help support independent creators like myself so we can bring you more episodes and feature even more creatives. Additionally, you can go to anchor.fm slash edgeline studios and have access to everywhere the podcast is available. And if you'd like, you can tap the support button and become a supporter with a small monthly donation to help sustain future episodes. Finally, follow us on Instagram at creative side up pod. Join the conversation, send us a voice message, share your story with us. We want to know what do you do creatively and what inspires you to do it. Your message could be featured on an upcoming episode of Creative Side Up. So thank you for all your support. And now back to the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Creative Side Up. My name is Tim Olson, and this is the show that unpacks creative minds. Today, my guest is writer-director Ben Fritz. Now, I'm going to make a joke like we haven't done it before, but <laughs> this looks like a press junk, and I'm just now realizing this for the first time. I've never said that before, but this this, this is your poster to your movie, Ben. Survival Guide. Survival That's Guide. That's right. Now, we'll eventually get into to talking about the process behind you making your movie, um, but for as long as I've known you, I've known you to be a filmmaker who isn't just focused in on one area. You're not just a, you don't just focus in on cinematography or writing um, or directing. You kind of have a grasp on every little pocket of filmmaking or as much as you can. Um, where does that interest come from and, and how did that start? Well, uh, I mean, a bit, the biggest thing that I think brings me to it is just this desire to collaborate with people. And um, film is kind of like the ultimate collaboration uh, art form. Uh, you, you, no one can say like, oh, I made this all by myself, you know, like, yeah. no way. I had so many awesome people to work with and we made it together. It's our film. Um, and so that's a, a big thing that draws me to it. Um, I did start out as an actor and have done, mm. done that. I've done, um, you know, location scouting, PA. I've been a part of, um, you know, little independent films. I've been a part of big blockbuster films. Right. I've, um, you know, worked on like kind of cheesy lifetime movies. Um, but throughout my experience, I have gotten a chance to work with people who are doing it at the highest level, people, um, actors who have won Emmys, um, Oscars, and things like that. And um, and when you are around those types of people, you start to pick up on what that quality is, what it takes to get to that level, to bring that kind sure. of um, quality forward. And um, you start to try to like mimic that and start to bring that forward. And yeah. um a lot of it is like kind of being in the presence of greatness and like trying to absorb it. Yeah. You know, but for um, that, that was out in, it, you were in Los Angeles yeah, too. And yeah. are you from Los Angeles or where are you no, from? I grew up here, you in, grew Wisconsin. Up here in Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, what, what got you to, well, I there? went to uh, school in Arizona state. I played football for Arizona state and the 97 Rose bowl football team. Oh wow. Um, so I was kind of thinking I was going to be doing that kind of stuff. Right. But, was that a winning game? Uh, we lost. Okay. Uh, that's why you remember it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk he about ta it. No, I was gonna say, you talk about this all the time. You Do keep bringing it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so from there, you know, I took kind of like my passion and yeah. dedication to kind of like uh, working out and kind of put it into um, art and started yeah. doing um, acting, actually. And I was doing like Shakespeare festivals. Um, I loved Shakespeare, classical theater. And, um, and that kind of took me further into... You um, were doing that in college. You were yeah, uh, yeah. theatrical acting. Mm -hmm. And that's was kind of the that was the door opening into film or how did that... It was. Uh, it kind of seemed like all roads were leading towards L.A. and, and they did. And, um, and then as an actor, it just started being, uh, it just felt like a very passive place to be waiting for somebody to give me an opportunity. Um, and I wasn't always really thrilled with the, um, material that I was going mm. out for auditions for. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to spend my life doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really inspired me to be, to find my own voice and be like, well, what do I want to share with the world? Like what, what kind of projects would I want to be a part of right. and to just start from there? Um, and you were thinking that at the time you were, because yeah. that's a pretty deep thought yeah. to have at that time. If you were, uh, cause I, I, like myself in college was just going to film school was just learning as much as you can. And I did feel like I had a good grasp on the, 
uh, the technical side of things, but it took me a really long time to really understand the deep meaning behind what we're doing and the art that we're creating. Um, but no, that's great. Well, and that's yeah. where it comes. It was kind of like the flip for me because yeah. uh, having studied acting and sure, um, it, you know, everything's right. all about story, character development. Yes. Like that was what I went to school for, and that's what I spent my early years doing. So I really lacked the technical training. I mean, mm. if you look at some of my earlier projects that I've produced, technically they're not awesome, but there are story elements and character elements that um, draw you in, and you kind of stay with it because of that. Um, right. So I, I feel like a big part of my um, growth as a filmmaker has been kind of trying to, you know, continue to learn more about the technical. And that aspect. was entirely after college that you started getting yeah. into filmmaking. So by that point, then it's all learning by doing. It's right. not training anymore. Um, cause I felt like even in, in film school for me, it was more of here's the, the skills that you need to know. And then they did teach a lot of theory and a lot of story, um, behind everything, but ultimately it was getting your hands on the gear that's going to be on a film set and understanding how to use that gear to light a scene or to, you know, hook up a microphone or, you know, all these technical things that n are necessities to make a film. Yes. Um, but you know, there's a balance in film school that is uh, you're you're excited to make a project, but it, film school is the perfect place to make as many mistakes as you can and just just try, you know, try something that that either will or won't work, but at least you'll know. Right. Um, so. I yeah. So I didn't get a chance to, um, I didn't go to film school, but right. I was um, really blessed to have some friends who were going to the American Film Institute mm. when I was living in L.A. And that, yeah, that's And that's answer. kind of like a, you know, a really well-known yes. film school. And um, I expressed to them, like, I want to know more about behind the camera. I, I, I'm feeling, you know, that I want to be more involved in some different ways. And um, they were really kind to invite me onto their sets and start just telling me, this is how you do this. Oh, this is this paperwork. You do it like this. And so I got to absorb, again, you know, a lot of knowledge just by being yeah. around people and seeing how they do it. And, and out of the kindness of people taking the time to, like, walk me through things or to give me opportunities, even though I didn't necessarily have those qualifications, somehow they felt like I had something that, um, you know, was... Uh, would help get the job done. So was that a, that was a move to Los Angeles for you? You were living in Los Angeles at the time? Yeah, I was living in LA at that time. Yeah. Okay. And then at <clears> what <throat> point, so you, you were working on other projects. You said you were working with big names, you know, people who are, uh, uh, you know, critically acclaimed. Um, what experiences were you taking away from, from those opportunities? Um, you know, I, w well, I think there's one of the things I've said is that um, just kind of like, be understanding what that energy is mm. and then trying to recreate it um, as well as then just having that experience under your belt of being like, oh, like I can work with this person. Oh, this person actually thinks that I have something to offer, you know, and getting that feedback. Um, and then that kind of builds confidence. Um, you know, a really good friend of mine uh, is an Emmy winning actress, Cynthia Watros. Mm. Um, she is most known for her work on Lost, but she's a hilarious comedian. Um, she was on Titus and mm -hmm. uh, the Drew Carey show. And, um, and I ended up um, writing, um, directing and producing a little web show for her when she had a little downtime um, that was kind of about her life a little bit. And, um, and that built a lot of confidence for me, just the fact that this person um, enjoyed what I was creating and um, thought it thought it mattered, and that kind of spurred me on and gave me more confidence. Um, and uh, you know, so it really makes a big difference when someone finally like sees something in you, and they're like, "You got it." You know? Yeah. And so, what were you doing with those projects? Were you actually filming them, or were you writing them, or oh, yeah. all of the above? Or well, that. Um, specific project is called Cynthia Watchos Gets Lost and it mm -hmm. lives on YouTube. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a filmed thing. Yeah, was can, it more like a, but I mean, was it like a one man band operation or would oh. you have crew or, or no, I mean, uh, how are you, how are you learning these skills that you're going to later use to, to make a, a full length feature film? You know, as someone who went to film school, I feel like although I went to film school and I definitely learned as much as I could, a lot of the actual maybe not learning, but realization of knowing how important each asset is didn't come until after film school. So in the very similar vein that you're talking about, it wasn't until, although we learned lighting uh, immensely in film school, it wasn't until 
after I graduated and started watching films with a different eye that I started to sort of put the pieces together and understand why there's a backlight or all these technical things like that we were taught, but I didn't understand how to apply it. And at least for me, it didn't connect yeah. until much later. So in a very similar sense, it's like you learn by doing. Exactly. I made them. plenty of mistakes, um, but I was also, as I it's expressed earlier, like got tapped into a community you know, of, of young filmmakers around the American Film Institute um, that really knew what they were doing. Um, and because I had been on some of these other sets, I'd made um, relationships and people were willing to come and like do a little project with me here and there. Um, and so I, I did have other people doing those things and, and I learned from them too. Right, right. Yeah. And so uh, talk about then what, what leads to your move back to Wisconsin? Well, um, that's uh, actually an extension of the Cynthia Watro story was that um, she was with United Artists and they were really interested um, in the little web show that we were having a lot right. of fun with. And United Artists is an agency. Um, right. An uh, act, yeah. A, a Talent national agent. agency. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so they brought us in to kind of discuss maybe it becoming a, a bigger show mm. kind of thing. And um, I, just something inside of me, I wasn't really, um, it, it didn't feel like necessarily what I wanted to do, um, but um, I had some other ideas, um, and I was aware of this book called The Ethical Slut, and I thought that there were a lot of themes that were really kind of like polarizing, reached out and grabbed you, and, um, and really relevant, um, that would be fun to explore in relationship, and, um, I thought I could get the rights to this book and develop a show for it, and they, um, encouraged me to do so, and I, and I did, um, go and get the rights to the book, and, um, was working on pitches uh, for HBO and Showtime with them. But um, at some point, the whole project just fell flat. Um, How do you know when you're excited about something and you're putting all your energy into something uh, and your focus, how do you know that something just isn't sitting right? There's a feeling, but I mean, how, uh, how do you know that it's not getting the, the I'm not, I don't want to say acceptance, but getting the, uh, it's not fulfilling the needs that you wished it would have uh, as a as an artist. Right. Well, I mean, I knew. Uh, are you talking about this particular yeah. project? Yeah. Um, with what happened with that? Yeah. With the right. The yeah. You mentioned. I mean, it with flat. with that, it, it was um, just like uh, a, a wanting to believe um, more than kind of seeing the signs around me, mm. and maybe not having. Um, the people who quite saw the vision that I was seeing. And so mm -hmm. it didn't just didn't manifest. Um, you know, it's a very tantalizing um, title, Ethical Slut. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds like it could be a really just like sex laden show. And I really wasn't interested in that. To me, mm -hmm. it's about a, a, a story about relationships. It's like you, you close, you know, shut the door, turn off the lights and sex kind of looks the same with everybody uh, to a certain mm -hmm. degree. And so what's interesting to me is how do people how do they maintain their relationships in between these things? The book is about open relationships. It's about mm -hmm. people who want to have multiple partners. And, and so that just seems like, wow, how do you manage all that? Like that, that's an interesting story to me. Well, creatively, right. that's, you know, right. then that's what leads to you expanding on the project right. a little bit more. So then what brought me home then was that, uh, I was kind of burnt out from, from that experience and having this big high of like, Oh, this is kind of happening, you know? And yeah. Then, uh, you know, and I still wanted to work with the material. Um, and so I came home for a summer to take, uh, be out of LA and, and just shoot like a little web show of it. And mm -hmm. we did make on a web own. show. Yeah. yeah. And um, that lives on YouTube too. Uh, it's, uh, it, we had a lot of fun with it. We ended up doing four seasons. Mm. It won uh, awards from web uh, festivals all over the world, from Korea to LA to Italy. And, um, and it was a cool, meaningful community project in which I got to work with a lot of different uh, demographics throughout um, Madison. And um, that's what I love. I love, uh, I love all the different ways that people organize their lives and all the way that different people work. And so well, it's so interesting hearing you talk about uh, coming back and, and then cr taking a project that was in development to becoming an independently based project. And all of a sudden, um, you're seeing new opportunity and it's breathing new life into the project by having your own creative control over it. Uh, and, and to me, that's a really um, um, like I love that idea of being able to find friends around you and colleagues around you that are willing to be a part of your project. And you all just get it. Right. Like as soon as these people are on board, you, you, you have a meeting with them and they just get it. 
There's nothing better than that. And, and they have to, right? Because you don't have the kind of money to pay them just to like right. do it anyway, right? right. Like it, it has to just be something that resonates with somebody yeah. um, or not. Absolutely. You know? And I can think of independent films that I've, that I've worked on. Uh, and then I can think of, you know, a sitcom of myself that I've, you know, that, well, that I co-wrote and, and co-directed. But I think back about a project like that all the time where I go, God, well, that was really lightning in a bottle. How did we get that to happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. How, and, and it was because you had so many people who were all so passionate about the project, all coming together with a shared interest. And it just makes the project so much easier to, to make, really, and pushes everything through. Right. Um, but so talk about, um, so, you, so you did a web series, and then from there, um, you went on to make a documentary, right? Or uh, is there so a few things in between there? There was one thing in between there. Okay. was um, one of my really good friends, Mike McGuire, who's also from Wisconsin, but was the friend that brought me into like the uh, AFI kind of group. Mm -hmm. um, he had a script that he was looking to, uh, that he wrote and wanted to direct, and we would produce it in Wisconsin. It was a story that would take place in northern Wisconsin called mm. Aquarians. And so uh, we did that, and I was the guy on the ground here. We had you know, uh, some name talent in it. Um, was this a feature? Yeah, a full okay. feature, the, photo, uh, the movie posters around mm. the corner right there. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> it, uh, you know, we brought out yeah. a, a lot of crew from L.A., but we sure. had a lot of local crew as well. Um, really beautiful, uh, wonderfully shot film um, that captures kind of the heart and soul of, like, winter in the Midwest. And it's um, kind of like a redemption story, a family drama, mm. healing story. Um, it did really well. Went to the um, Palm Springs International Film Festival. Wow. Um, won the best um, feature of Wisconsin um, from Beloit in, um, Festival. So. so how do you get into tackling something as big as a feature film? Um, I know for me, whenever I am thinking of larger projects, my mind immediately goes to who can I collaborate with because taking it on yourself is such a big task uh, and very daunting. But talk about... Uh, <laughs> What kind of crazy person says, I'm going to make a full length feature on an extremely low budget? This kind of crazy uh, person right here. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, Aquarians had, had a, a good size budget. Yeah. Um, and so we were able to you know, employ people and, uh, mm. and really um, you know, do something on a, on a really high quality level. And, um, but then what happened for me was that, uh, I wanted to kind of like start getting my hand into like really making my own projects and features. And I didn't have that kind of, um, money at my fingertips. And, and because I didn't quite have the experience, I wasn't like willing to be like, let's go, you know, get a bunch of investors in on this. Like I felt mm. like I needed to kind of, did you know how out. to do that at that point? Or were you just <clears throat> apprehensive about it? Cause you weren't, you didn't know how, or you were just at, focused on making the movie. So by, by the time I've come along to doing the, the documentary on women's yeah. um, health legislation in Wisconsin and, um, and survival guide, I had definitely been around, um, you know, production long mm -hmm. enough. I, I obviously had produced my own web sh show, written, mm -hmm. directed and produced my own web shows, um, you know, but not full length feature. Right. Um, but I often shot them in, in the style that you would shoot a feature in terms of, um, consecutive days, you know, I, I right. didn't divide it up and spread it out over a year or something like that. It's like, I use that momentum. I think that was really important, at least for me when I'm making film is to like, to take advantage of the momentum you have now, um, because kind of people kind of, you know, lose steam after yeah. a while. Um, did you, how long was that process making that film, that first film? The Aquarius yeah. movie? Yeah. Um, well that, let's see. So that was the first film that I, pro that I produced. Um, and from, I know that Mike had been working on the script for like 10 years or so oh, wow. um, throughout film school and stuff. Wow. Um, but in terms of it having been shot and then, you yes. know, in festivals and stuff, yeah. that was a two year process. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so, I but I asked because that kind of gives you a, a, that kind of gives you a, a, at least some sort of, uh, point of reference for moving forward right. with your right. next film right. um, after the documentary. Absolutely. But it gives you, see, it seems like every step of the way you're learning a little bit more and you're, you're taking away certain little parts that you're going to apply later uh, into the process. Is that an accurate? That is exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Each uh, experience led up to me finally feeling like, okay, I, 
can do this. Now, I didn't necessarily set out to do it on my own. I, at the beginning of, of kind of starting this survival guide, I was really looking for some other people to come along. And, um, and occasionally people would, you know, um, they'd be very interested and mm -hmm. want to be a part of it and even invest. Um, and then something would happen and they, they would go and be like, ah, don't go, you know, <laughs> but it was always yeah. like, um, just the right amount of kind of pushing me forward mm. to be like, okay, uh, I, you know, to, to take me to the next step. I can Pushing yourself it. forward or having the people pushing around you push forward, you? Pushing myself forward, you know, yeah. um, and that, oh, I can do this, okay. you know, I, not because maybe feeling at first doubting that I could do it, right. you know, and then, um, and then at some point it also just became a thing that I needed to prove to myself that I could do it, right. you know, right. regardless of what anybody else thinks, regardless of Your what self things, as an artist. In, yeah. regardless of what the voices in my head are saying, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm yeah. gonna, I, I, like I'm going to do this. And right. I had a finding you know, the right mindset to, to put yourself in. To absolutely. Make it happen. There's a very distinctive moment. Like I had a, a script written actually before um, this moment that I had where I was in Costa Rica on the highest point um, in the uh, highest mountain point in Central America. And I just was not really sure what I should be doing. And um, I was just kind of feeling out into the universe, you know, connecting uh God, the universe, the mm -hmm. force, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I believe they're all kind of the same thing. And just like wondering, should I, is this something I should do? Is this supported? Um, mm. Is this something that's supported? And um, I got a resounding like, yes, move forward with this. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. And I didn't have really a budget or anything. But um, when I got back from that trip, certain things just started falling into place easily. I didn't have to push too hard and they were just working. And I'm like, okay, well, if this go, if this happens, then I, I know that I should just keep going. And, right. and, and, and that would happen. And I'm like, okay, well, that's great. Like I didn't have to work too hard at that. And yeah. it happened, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. And those kind of things, that synchronicity started happening a lot around this project. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's a really special project to me too, is just kind of how it helped me grow my own kind of just faith and trust in the process in, um, and you know, the unknown and moving forward. Um, that was a at, big at thing. some point though, there has to be a sense of, uh, not that there wasn't, but because things are kind of falling in place the way you want it there at some point is a building pressure to actually fulfill what's being promised and to actually make it happen. And which I know being an independent creator, that weight starts to weigh down on you and you gotta, you gotta fire back. You gotta right. make it happen. So I imagine the same thing was happening to you on a much higher level. Absolutely. Um, but that also is what helps you raise the bar, you know, and to be better and to push yourself. And yet I, I also think that, um, this approach to this film at first wasn't necessarily just to make a film, um, me and a number of other people who were involved in this film were looking to create this thing we called the Children's Film Academy of Madison. Mm. Um, and it was, uh, the idea behind it was, you know, working with, um, like, elementary age um, kids and finding a voice, helping them develop a story and take it all the way through to a full production, like a short film kind of a thing. And um, part of the reason behind that was just because of how powerful film is, how it can draw you in. And, um, and if you don't know how it's created, sometimes it can really mislead you. And so I thought it would be really cool to be able to help empower um, a younger generation into really understanding um, you know, the art form, how it's made, and, um, and how it manipulate, manipulates us, um, good mm -hmm. and bad. Yep. You know? yep. um, and, and then it makes... You know, it helps make a better viewer, um, a, a more intelligent um, person, and what the information they're taking in. Because of the it. process behind it, um, that that when you're, you know, if you're if you're teaching how to actually make a film, uh, and at the same time, I got to say, you're, you're also you're learning too. <laughs> so yeah. you're taking the experiences that that you've already um, been a part of. And then applying that as as a teacher, and then also uh, you're also learning, right? Right. right. <laughs> That's a big right. part of it. And so that was the thing was like here we were talking <laughs> about working with kids, and I had a little yeah. experience working kids with kids in the yeah. ethical slut thing because yeah. that was uh, a f about a family actually, and I worked mm. with kids in elementary. I went into elementary schools right. even with that project, right. which I kind of love. I was like this like juxtaposition. And you have directing experience, like, you know, like they they you know a lot of times the, when I say they, I mean like the industry the 
adages don't work with kids, but I, I've seen you before because we had we did a commercial uh, that I was uh, co-directing for uh, that had kids in it, yeah. and you know I, I've seen you work with kids before, and it's it's very it's it's a delicate thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It, you've got lights, you've got camp, you've got a crew staring at it. it it's a weird thing sure making is. a film. Yeah. So just trying to put um, you know someone in, and also adults too, just trying to put someone in in an environment that is comfortable to well, express you know let's cut to the chase the thing they often say in the industry right is like don't work with animals or kids yeah because they tend to be unpredictable right and um i have a tendency uh of trying to do things that people tell me not to do the barbara streisand <laughs> effect <laughs> um anyway uh, yeah. yeah so yeah. uh that whole, so, so the whole thing, you know, going back to trying to get more experience about working with kids, and that was kind of the whole beginning right. motivation behind this was that we were going to be creating a, um, you know, a, an ed educational entity, um, and that this would be another way in which we can kind of build credential about that. And then we ended up just, you know, really having such a great time and um, really making something we felt was was good enough that like yeah. this is a movie and right. we're gonna put it out there so right so yeah. what ha so at that point then are you uh talk a little bit about that casting process then because you know we can think of filmmakers who who make movies that that speak to the young at heart you know when we talk about we were talking about john hughes off off camera and john hughes is somebody who was writing movies that spoke directly to young people and at a time when it was probably, you know, it was needed the most. And I was saying, I was telling you that I think John Hughes was so far ahead of his time, but it was so precious in the moment, just seeing the, the, his body of work and how it's appreciated today. But it's because he was able to tap into something that not only spoke to young people, but could speak to the young at heart and people who, you know, would, would go on to, and it, it, it would just always be relatable, no matter when you yeah. watch it, it would have that relatable essence to I, it. I really believe the best filmmakers know how to tap into um, that, you know, if you want to call it that force or whatever it is, that underlining thing that connects us all and speaks to us all, regardless, as you said, of your age, gender, whatever your orientation and yeah. the story um, will know, transcend star wars is one of the greatest ones of that like i think a lot of people think they just love watching a sci-fi movie and yet there yeah. are themes in this story that speak to the core of what we are mm. period mm -hmm. you know i think mm -hmm. i i experience i guess definitely and so taking mm -hmm. that uh taking that idea with you into writing a film uh, so the writing process, speak a little bit about that for uh, a full length feature. You've already done one. Now you're doing your, you know, this is all on you really, right? The, the creative side of it, right? Yeah. I mean, and you know, you get by with a little help from your friends, right? Yes. You, I, you wow. get, you get some input and, yeah. um, that's incredibly valuable. Um, but right. And, and I've written a number of scripts. Um, I've had a script option before, um, when I lived in LA and, so, you know, I, I know the process. I know that, you know, you got to kill your darlings, not to get too married to one thing that, you know, um, it, it, there, it, it, it takes a while to kind of like really weed through and, and find your story. Um, and uh, are you playing out the parts in your head like as you're as you're writing? Are you focusing on one character? Because this movie uh, Survival Guide has several characters in it. It's a ensemble piece. So yeah. as a writer, what are you doing to uh, kind of keep track of every character? Um, it's a big question. It is a big question. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I there's always. Um, I think there's always things that I would love to go back and even mm -hmm. be more specific about mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. change a little bit. I wish we would have gotten a little more footage of this or that mm -hmm. um, that um, come back around. But um, when I'm writing, I, I usually feel like I'm kind of just opening a channel and mm -hmm. um, allowing kind of things just to flow through me. And, and then it's amazing how things just kind of start making sense. And then you didn't know why you wrote that part in the beginning. You're like, I don't know, but you just keep going. And then all of a sudden, oh, that can tie into this. Oh, oh. And all these connections start happening. And it's just kind of like life too, right? Like you kind of like, I don't know why that happened in my life. That's kind of, that sucked. But then whatever that was ends up, oh, that makes perfect sense later, right? Yeah, like, no, absolutely. And I only ask because it's always interesting to hear other writers talk about their process. Yeah. Um, I'm not like someone who like sits down and writes like 
five pages a day. Like yeah. I'm someone who like sits and thinks about it. Um, I love to just like go hiking and just let it ruminate and open up. And then all of a sudden one day, one night I'll sit down and I'll write 40 pages and, you know, not, not get up and, you know, and then, it, it kind of just comes out of me. And then I got to go <laughs> back and like refine it. And you know, rinse and, and right. repeat. Right, right. Exactly. How many times? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Just want to take a quick moment and let you know of a few ways you can help support the show. First, you can like this video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the content we're putting out. Share this episode with other creatives and help spread the word. Next, you can go to creativesideup.com. That'll take you over to our Kofi page where you have the ability to drop us a few bucks and help support independent creators like myself so we can bring you more episodes and feature even more creatives. Additionally, you can go to anchor.fm slash edgeline studios and have access to everywhere the podcast is available. And if you'd like, you can tap the support button and become a supporter with a small monthly donation to help sustain future episodes. Finally, follow us on Instagram at creative side up pod. Join the conversation, send us a voice message, share your story with us. We want to know what do you do creatively and what inspires you to do it. Your message could be featured on an upcoming episode of Creative Side Up. So thank you for all your support. And now back to the show. So you've got the script ready. You're making your your film and you're, well, before you even make it, you've got to cast it. Uh, what What do you... When you're an independent film and you don't have a big budget, how is what do you do to reach out to and get get a cast for your film? What is what is that like? Well, you know, I I guess I already had certain channels in place um, because of some of the bigger projects I've done before, and because I'd just been making stuff for a while. Um, I already knew um, you know different um, places to go online to post things as well as. Uh, I knew some casting people, some agencies around that I could reach out to and tell them what we're doing. Um, and um, a, a number of the kids that are starring in the film are um, children of friends of mine who are actors as well, and they've been in stuff of mine. Um, even uh, the lead young girl in this um, uh, had just a little bit part in one of my uh, web series. Things. Were there any rehearsals, script rehearsals, before you went into production? Uh, we had a read-through, okay. and, and that was it. Um, so not, no, not, not much. Not um, much. We, we really just went with it. You know, it was, um, I didn't want it to feel too much like work. You know, this was, mm. as I had said before, kind of like a, a fun summer thing. A lot of everyone's working on it out of their passion for it. Um, you know, we weren't going to be doing 20 takes on something, you know, it was like three or four. And if we didn't get it, we move on. We'll figure it out and post, but we want to keep this light and fun, you know? Um, the kids filmed for maybe a total of 10 days, some of them maybe a couple less. Um, we had 14 days filming all together, but that was spread out over a period of a month so that they could have their summer. Some of them had some camps they had to go to, you know, so we weren't beating it over the head. Um, we really just wanted to, like, put everything together and just see what happened organically without too much, you know, cajoling and yeah do you want to give some context to what survival guide is what the movie is well it's a thriller horror film actually and i chose that genre just because that tends to be a popular genre that first-time filmmakers will um choose because um they can often have some kind of success with it without having like a big star or production value kind of thing you know we didn't have like a bunch of money or anything and we didn't have stars but um, I think the one thing that's really unique about the film that we have is that we have um, six 12-year-olds, um, you know, and I, you don't see that every day. Um, and there's something that draws us um, to what they can create together. Mm. Uh, I think we see that in the success of things like uh, Stranger Things and um, It. Or Stand By Me was a film that was a big um, influence. influence for me, for sure. I really always connected with that film and um, how these kids bound, uh, bonded together, and it's seemingly almost a children's film, but yet has some really dark and um, some deep themes to it. Um, and so th those elements exist in this as well. Did you find that there was um, camaraderie between the, the kids on and off the set? Yeah, yeah. And uh, th I mean, that's something that, that we had to build as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, we structured our shooting schedule to um, make the most out of that. So 
when they didn't really know each other yet and they're still, you know, not liking, maybe not that they didn't like each other, but just didn't have that connection, mm. then that was the earlier parts in the film in which they are a little more separate and um, kind of picking at each other and just kind of <laughs> mean, you know, yeah. little yeah. kids can be mean to each other. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, and, and we have that. And then yeah. what happens through the story is that they have to pull together and they have to bond. And so, you know, that those parts were shot later in the film when that had been developed. Mm. Uh, one of my favorite parts of filming usually was having all these kids sitting in, you know, in my truck on our way to set uh, and just listening to them talking all the time, yeah. you know, and yeah. get, like uh, just being a fly on the wall and <laughs> the way that they connected and their relationships yeah. grew over time, yeah. you know. We should also uh, mention how interesting the production process was because much of this film is shot on location out in the elements and we're not talking about there being, uh, you know, trailers or we're not talking about there being places with air conditioning, you know, you're outside in the summer and m most of the movie is outside outdoors Absolutely. Uh, and the whole theme of it is survival guide. You know, it's like, we got to survive out in the elements. So the production seems a little bit challenging. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and as I've said before, you know, I, I like to rise to a challenge. Um, and uh, and also it maybe asked a little bit more of everybody to just take a little more responsibility for yourself, um, you know, which I think is always a, a, a good thing. And um, and the kids had to be there for each other, you know, uh, quite often it was me, camera guy, sound person and uh, and the kids, you know, yeah. there might be another hand occasionally. Sometimes there would be another acting adult who could help out, you know. But um, they really grew a lot and came together. And I even had some parents come forward and say, you know, my kid grew a lot and learned a lot about, like, committing to something and, like, really seeing it through and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, those are, those are great things you want to hear. Did you require the kids to be there every day? For, through the production or was it staggered like one day you need one kid or two kids and then the next day or was it everyone every day no not everyone every day um definitely uh you know um it, it was it was summertime and the kids mm -hmm. had a lot of things going on other <laughs> things they wanted to do and it's yeah. funny how like you know they want to do this but then they get on set and they're just kind of like are we going home yet can we go home you know yeah. and then afterwards they're like oh i love doing it but like you yes know, it, it, there's always kind it's of it's hard thing work that. right it's hard work and in the moment you may not you can't there's no way to see what the overall end product's going to be in the moment right um but on set it's 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 a lot of fun when you're when you're you know when you're getting to be creative and uh, express your story that you spent time creating and so getting the lines read the right way or to be said in a certain way that you're looking for right. where uh, off camera you were mentioning to me that the the takes were usually two three takes no more um, because you are working with kids and there's a lot riding on this. Yeah, and so that means you don't always get it exactly the way you want it. Absolutely, um, and and because the whole point was that we need to keep this light and fun. You know, we don't have all the the money and the whatever to keep it moving forward. That we wanted to, um, you know, just make sure we didn't get into a place where things just got to feel like work and they weren't having fun anymore. And I've worked on soap opera. Stand over there. <laughs> yeah. Now go over there. But one I won't of the say anything. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but one, one of the things that really helped me too is that I've I've experienced working on soap operas. Yeah. I've had like you know under the five, Californians. Right, under five lines <laughs> on um, on General Hospital and that yeah. kind of thing. And okay. one of the things I I really love about that is kind of the immediacy of it all. And this also comes mm. to my theater training as well. Um, is like they only do, they're only doing one or two takes and you're moving on and moving on. Um, I like that. You hear that about Clint Eastwood as well, that he typically, you know, 14 days is, is a good, you can shoot a film then. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of people making a full length feature in much less time than that. But right. um, about not really beating things over the head, but like really trusting the process, I guess. So creatively, what are you doing then because you aren't spending a lot of time on any one take? Are you changing angles every time? Are you, what creatively is being done with the camera or the lighting or the scene? Uh, to make sure you are getting what you need because you're not just, you're not saying you're doing, you know, maybe two takes and then calling it quits and saying, well, no. I got what I got. No, no, no. You're making sure you have exactly what you need. What creative things are you doing to get those things? 
Uh, I mean, it, that comes down to, to planning from the beginning of the day, right? And mm -hmm. just kind of knowing what your angles are going to be and then also trying to be economical um, with that. And if there's opportunities in which you can, um, you know, uh, condense some a few shots maybe, um, that, that can help. Um, but... So directing a film with kids in it, are you, how are you getting them emotionally to a place that they need to be at when you're shooting a, a film is shot out of order. You're, you're, you're out in the elements. It's a hot summer day. How are you getting those reactions that, that you're looking for? What kind of, um, you know, what, what kind of techniques are, are being done to make sure that because you are doing two takes, three takes at, at most, that you're able to making sure you're getting the performance yeah. you're looking well, for. Well, that comes down to your directing, right? And how you um, interact with the kids and how you are able to connect with them mm -hmm. and speak their language. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, have uh, a lot of experience having been um, a yoga teacher and a body worker and sitting in silence and kind of really feeling things out and, um, and understanding kind of how to feel out where people are and then how to help them kind of start to move in a certain direction. Um, I, I'm, I've definitely, uh, that's one of my fortes. So emotion at, and, and right. energy and just trying to right. reflect, uh, that so it's able to be captured on camera. Right. And so that's one of my, uh, definitely one of my fortes as a director, as I've gone back to saying like more like story character kind of stuff rather than technical kind of stuff. Um, so there's that, um, the kid, kids are also like, if you can find that place where, you know, I really, um, I see them as equals to me. Mm -hmm. I don't talk down to them or anything like that. Um, and so we have a really great rapport. And he, these kids are all wonderful and have touched my heart, and I love watching them grow, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, so so once you have that rapport um, and they feel that, and they get a chance to kind of step up to that, and you see that yeah. in them, you know? Yeah. And they... It, There's some pride in, in accomplishment of that scene yeah. and then eventually getting to see the whole thing right. when it's finished. Um, are you, so when the film is, uh, besides the, the actors, because it is outside and outdoors a lot, uh, the production isn't just let's bring as much gear as possible and take it with us. You'll know, taking, uh, you know, tons of cases up with you, uh, into the woods and stuff. Are you, um, you're trying to pack small, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, a lot of times it looks like it's out in the middle of nowhere, but what I did was find locations that, you know, looked like we were in the middle of nowhere and we didn't have to walk too far yeah. to, to get to that. The camera pans and there's a Walmart. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. No, I but, mean, but you're packing small so you can stay mobile and be able to think on your feet. And Absolutely. in any moment um, that you're you're drawn to maybe a, a little bit different of, of, of a location than what you originally thought of because maybe the light's different or there's, a, a, you know, maybe a branch coming through that's looking the right way. You're able to pick up in that instance and just move and go. Yeah. And, and the other thing that's um, having shot outside for the majority of it is that we weren't lugging around a lot of lighting equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, we used, mm -hmm. it was all natural light. So that, that helps a lot. <laughs> Can you think of any challenges that you, I mean, the whole thing is a challenge of course, yeah. but any particular instance that, that was, that was a specific uh, challenge for you on set to make this? Yeah. Well, one of the challenges is that you, you're shooting a kind of thriller horror film and there's nighttime stuff like, and you can't have kids out all night all the time. Like, you really they're not going to be out there for 12 hours. Are you, what are you going to do? Happen. You know, like, um, so you got to find some other ways to do it. Like, uh, we, we shot interior tent scenes in the mm -hmm. day during the day mm -hmm. in my basement, yeah. you know? Um, and we did have some night shoots that, you know, um, so getting creative with the way that you're, you're shooting, although, you know, it cuts together. So it looks like it's outside and then the cutting scene or the cutting shot after that would be them outside walking out of a tent and it cuts together and it looks like, yeah. Yeah. And then also really needing to take like a lot of that. If we get a little bit of uh, a nighttime taking the most advantage out of that as we could, yeah. you know, yeah. um, so you'd kind of pack a lot into that. Sure. Part. And overall, the process took how long, the, the production process there? Um, for filming? Yeah, we, for filming. Yeah, well, um, that was just over a month. Yeah. Oh, okay. We started in, um, in right after kind of like 
4th of July and finished yeah. in the early August. Um, as I said earlier, it was a total of 14 days and it was broken up here or there. The kids, none of the kids were on set more than 10 days. Um, our adult stars are uh, Colleen Madden from uh, American Players Theater mm -hmm. and um, Nyasia Ellison, um, uh, who is a local theater actress here as well. Um, and um, those days, you know, are, are always a little more smooth because there's uh, less um, that you really have to be prepared for when you've worked right. with adults. So uh, you're finished filming and talk about uh, the last shot of the day. You're, fil you know, you, you, the whole thing's in the can. It's ready to go. Is there any relief on your end or do you immediately go into the mindset of now we enter the edit? Um, <laughs> well, because of... Um, you know, not having as much time to kind of like go through dailies and that kind of thing. I actually had to sit down and just like edit a, a rough cut immediately to make mm, sure I wow. had what I needed to at least have some kind of semblance of a film. And, uh, and I, and I stayed up <laughs> kind of, and just kind of got that done. Um, and, uh, and then after that I collapsed cause I was, and I pretty, exhausted, I was exhausted. I was wearing so many different hats. Um, and I had no idea how burnt out I was that for pretty much the next three to four months, I think every evening I was just sitting there and, you know, watching TV. And I've had this happen out. before. Can you relate to this where you're dreaming about the project? It gets that in depth, like you're having dreams about the edit. <laughs> Have you ever had that? <laughs> well, uh, no, not so right, much. Well, I this. guess I'm the only one then. But All I right. didn't. I, look, I'm not an editor. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I even though I said I, I did a put an, an edit together. Yeah. I, I know, like, my, I, I can try to do like everything. Yeah. But so I, you were working with an editor. I'm aware of what my limitations are. And okay. um, uh, my first editor, Bre Brett McDowell, um, Donald was uh, is fantastic. Um, yeah. And I just kind of put it in his hands. And he went to work. He went to work. And that's what, yeah. you, that's what I rely on. I rely on people showing up and doing their thing, you know, because the whole process, um, every step of the way, it's, it's, it's a collaborative art form. And I'm not just looking for people who are, who are just going to do what you tell them to do. I want people who Creative take initiative. Input. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and yeah. put that into it and it makes the entire process film come out to be something that everyone's proud of Absolutely. it's not like it's just ben's film Absolutely, it's everyone's film everyone who had whoever just briefly touched the film they all had a part in making it happen mm -hmm. and for me that's the most exciting thing about anything creatively is is always the collaboration process and who you get to work with and who you get to meet because that person you're going to see on another project and you're going to eventually you know everybody cross paths again so yeah. it's a really fun experience and um so how long was the editing process? Um, that took quite a while, actually, because as I said, we didn't really have a budget, so couldn't really like pay to have this done fast. Um, yeah. And then there came a point where um, my first editor was um, all of a sudden moving and had some life changes, and the film wasn't quite done. Um, so I had to find another editor, and uh, Brian Hollandike took, to took over after that. And so the editing process took... Um, it actually really took about two years. Um, so it was a little longer than I really wanted it to. Um, I feel like two years is kind of like the max of what you want to do. Um, I remember going back to the, the original, uh, we met up for lunch once and you'd sent me the script and we talked about it. That was so long ago. Yeah. That was yeah. so long ago. Yeah. And yeah. now it's finished. It's an actual thing. Yeah. It actually so happened. The whole thing. Uh, I mean, from today right now, uh, it would have been, about almost two and a half years. So when mm -hmm. it, it's right now, it's scheduled to premiere at the Beloit uh, International Film Festival the end of, end of February, and um, that will have been two and a half years. Wow. So I'm still, I still feel like we we we, we came in at the right time. If if it had gone on much longer, um, I think that would have been really detrimental to the project and just um, it's the right timing keeping that flow going. It's know? the right timing. So is the the life of the project now festival? Is it the circuit that you're? Is that the direction it's going? Yeah. So we've been submitting it to festivals, and um, we you know I've gotten into one. Um, we'll start hearing from quite a few more, right. uh, you know, in in the next couple of months, and um, and do hope and you know expect that we'll be somewhere. So You'll be somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. watch for it. But I but when you get into a festival, are you going and doing a Q and a, or is it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, that's kind of, 
one of the fun things about yeah. festivals, right? And is meeting getting, other filmmakers right, too, yeah. Um, is, you know, and for um, the audience to be able to kind of like pull the curtain back and kind of get a little glimpse in on the whole process um, just helps kind of in marketing it on your, you know, on a lower level of things. Um, so, yeah, we're... That we'll, we'll we'll be very excited. I know the kids um, have are looking forward to. Have know, they seen a it. cut yet of it? Um, so they've seen little parts here okay. and there. Um, I, I've definitely needed to to kind of keep them yeah. motivated at times. You know, like when we've come. You back. have a trailer. The trailer's right. done. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it, it's funny though, because like they'll get excited about it. And they're like, well, they want to see it and they want it out and they want to yeah. share it with their friends. And yeah. I'm like, well, it'll probably be about a year yet. You know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, they're not talking to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there is an appreciation for the art of making a film and the process that goes into it. And yeah. I know you were talking to me about kids understanding once they see the overall process, having a respect for other films that they see and knowing what went into it, how many takes something took, or knowing just the, the hours and the time that goes into committing yourself to, yeah. a, to a project like that. Yeah. Um, it's a very Im, Im, important thing for, for people to understand that, that, you know, even for something as simple as like this podcast, they're just experiencing it and they're seeing the final product. Right. But the hours of editing and the creative thought behind it and the actual planning of the release and the all reality the, of the what reality. you're really getting into is there's a disconnect there. And I would see that often out in LA, especially started as when I was um, conducting auditions out in LA for things is, you know, people think they want something, you know, they see this and they have an idea uh, from what they see on the screen or something that, that it's this. And then there's the reality of, of actually doing it and, and the work that goes into it. And a lot of people will start to find that, oh, maybe I don't really want to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, so yeah. um, it's, it, it, it's great. Well, it, it's interesting you bring that up because my initial move and my initial thought coming out of film school, spending some years out of film school, uh, making money at a job. And then my initial thought was, let's go out West. Let's go to Los Angeles. And so I moved to Los Angeles and not for long because I didn't know what my place was there. I didn't know exactly what my, I, I've always been interested in camera work and, and making films, but I mean, that's such a broad statement. So I didn't really know what my, my purpose was there. So I ended up moving back and then doing more music video work and, and more creative work. And, and, and so eventually I think the end goal is to, once you understand what the purpose is, and maybe this is for you too, uh, once you have projects behind you that you can push yourself forward and say, I did this, this is what I do. Then you can kind of start making a name for yourself right. and getting yourself to be seen in a certain light as, as someone who does this thing. What your niche uh, is. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And you and that comes from just time. I agreed. Right. Yeah. 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 And experimentation, right? Yes. Like try, try it all. Yes. Try all the hats on and, Eventually one will fit, right? I hope so. This one has for a very long time and it's not going anywhere soon, folks. Um, so talk about the future of, of, of filmmaking for you okay. and what that entails now that you've made a film. And is there a, have you thought about perhaps maybe a, a, a streaming uh, version of this somewhere? Well, or? absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we'll wait and see kind of like how it will do in the festivals and everything and whether or not we'll do a limited theatrical release, um, which was something uh, like we did with Aquarians, um, or if it'll just go straight up. Um, you know, and just be streamed, you know, on Amazon or something like that. Right. Um, it is a film that has, um, there's, uh, there's a sequel that I've been working on, actually, a follow-up um, story on this. Um, so that's something that I, a script that's been squirreled away. But I've also kind of been, right now I'm really just focused on kind of trying to promote it and get it out. And, um, and I'll start, I've got some other scripts in mind, too. So... Every time I think of a project now that I want to do, especially a long-term project, if it's a film, I immediately go to, this is going to be streaming. Like my thought is, this is going to be streaming. It's yeah. not going to be in a theater. Like, I don't know why, but that's just my thought. Oh, like, I'm just just like on autopilot going, this is going to be streaming somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Like I don't even imagine the theater anymore. It's the most accessible thing, right? Yeah. Like there's still these, some quite a bigger roadblocks for you to get it, um, yeah. you know, into a theater. Um, and the, um, getting Aquarians into theaters um, across Michigan and Wisconsin was a really great learning process and also realization process that, oh, yeah, 
this can be done, right. but it is a totally different thing than being able to just um, you know follow the requirements and upload something to Amazon or YouTube, right? And like, nothing to take away from the magic of seeing your project on a huge giant screen in a theater of, of people who are there to appreciate your film and, and be entertained by it. But I'm just like, my mind goes immediately to if it's not streaming, it's nowhere. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah reach, it, you have the ability to reach yeah. more people. Period, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so whether it, it's so funny, like this is just the way the technology is moving and nothing against theaters. I go to theaters and see movies all the time, but the streaming to me seems like a much higher, higher impact. And I would be interested to see how um, festivals start supporting streaming yeah. and not that, that you have, not that you shouldn't be at the festival, but I just mean like, are we going to see like a Beloit film festival? Uh, well, we kind of already do actually not Beloit, but Sundance. Sundance is streaming sure. content. Yeah. And so I'm just curious to see where that movement goes in the future. Yeah. You well, know? and I think even just the Oscar nominated films for best picture right now, there's a yes. handful that, yes. you know, on have streaming not, services. Right. Yes. So that shows, you know, definitely it's accepted. A turn Industry in that direction. Accepted. Right. Um, but for you specifically, uh, you've talked about maybe uh, venturing into a sequel or uh, you're always doing something. You're always writing something, trying to stay creative, right? That's part That's, of the process. It is. It is. You just can't put a timestamp on it. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, you know, and I also look for opportunities to collaborate with people mm -hmm. and um, feel like when the time is right, the, the right. right kind of thing just meshes and you're in on it. And it's but you're cool. open to smaller projects too, whether it's oh, yeah. a, a, a short or a music video or you're open well, to all of it. Right. And so I talked about this being right, a two and a half year process. And during that time I've, um, you know, conceptualized, directed and produced a few music videos um, and have had a lot of fun with those. And that's great because they, you know, you shoot it in a day or two and, and you're done, you know, Great. Yeah, um, Great. So where can people go to learn more about survival guide and you mention it again, where it's going to be screening yep. and then where they can watch for it coming up. Well, um, you can learn a lot about survival guide from our webpage at survival, survival guide, the movie.com. Um, we also are on Facebook. Um, and right now, uh, our, um, we've got two screenings coming up the end of February at the Beloit International Film Festival, February 21st at 7.30 p.m. on opening night, and then Sunday the 23rd at 2.30. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, like I said, we we're hoping to get in some more festivals and have it out there and then be up streaming or out it's an exciting world. feeling, so, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. It's really great. It's fun um, and just a great accomplishment to be able to say like oh, we did this we, we exactly all so that's yeah. that's it man you're doing <laughs> it you're doing it hey all right ben thanks for being on the show thank you tim creative side up is an edgeline studios production thanks for listening and we hope you join us again soon